we felt very privileged, you know, to be assigned to foreign missions. And when I went, it was goodbye forever. I, I would say it was all new, strange, different, that you just couldn't possibly imagine. My family, they could never figure out why I got this crazy idea. <laughs> I guess that's the hardest thing to leave home and family and go so far away when you don't know what's at the other end. Since 1918, very no missionaries have set out to live and work in countries far from home and unknown to them. It's a life of uncertainty and hard work, often dangerous, but it's a life they've embraced with great passion and purpose. Mary Noel began as the dream of three visionaries two of them Catholic priests, Father James A. Walsh from Boston, Massachusetts, and Father Thomas Price from Wilmington, North Carolina. The third was a young graduate of Smith College from Jamaica Plains, Massachusetts, Molly Rogers. Father Price and Father Walsh founded the Catholic Foreign Mission Society of America, the first religious organization established in the United States to train Catholic priests for overseas missions. The year was 1911, and the idea of sending U.S. Catholics to missions overseas was new. America, our own land, has till now been so busy in building up her own church that she has sent hardly any messengers to non-Christians. It is time now that the Catholics of America should take a part in the evangelization of the world in gratitude for what God has done for this country. Father James A. Walsh. The New Mission Society bought a farm on a knoll overlooking the Hudson River Valley in New York State. They called it Mary Knoll in honor of the Virgin Mary. And soon the Catholic Mission Society of America was better known as Mary Knoll Missioners. Molly Rogers led a group of laywomen who were eager to be part of Mary Knoll's efforts in overseas missions. They worked hard and dressed simply, aspiring to become part of a religious community. But in those days, Mary Knoll could only provide training for priests and brothers, so they supported the men with secretarial work and waited their turn. In a time when women had few options for a career outside of their homes, the idea of even being associated with missions overseas was exciting. In the beginning, they were called secretaries. They helped edit and manage the printing and mailing of Mary Knoll's monthly magazine called The Field Afar. By 1918, the first seminarians were ordained priests, and Father James A. Walsh presided over Mary Knoll's first departure ceremony, sending a small group of priests to missions in China. Bernard Meyer, Francis X. Ford, James E. Walsh, and Thomas Price, one of Mary Knoll's founders. Father Price would die there, in Hong Kong of appendicitis, just one year later. Two years later, the Mary Knoll secretaries realized their dream of becoming a religious community, the Foreign Mission Sisters of St. Dominic. Molly Rogers became Mother Mary Joseph, director of the new community, which soon became known simply as the Mary Knoll Sisters. By 1921, they too began sending missionaries to China. After weeks at sea, the missionaries arrived in China. They had no experience in other countries. They didn't speak any of China's many languages. But never mind, at last they had begun their great adventure. 